The basic structures. We know that the tears are produced by the lacrimal glands that are located in the lacrimal fossa, right? The lacrimal gland is located in the lacrimal fossa and it produces our tears into the conjunctival sac. The tears, are, this is the conjunctival sac, this is where the tears are drained into. From the lacrimal glands into the lacrimal sac and then in the from the lacrimal sac the tears drain into the nasolacrimal duct okay this is the lacrimal sac and this whole thing is your nasolacrimal duct now we know that the nasolacrimal duct opens into the inferior meatus this is a frequently asked question so the nasolacrimal duct drains into the inferior meatus in the nose so this is an overview of the uh, Tear drainage system. This is a gross view. Now let's look at the detailed structures. After draining into the conjunctival sac, that is into your eye, the tears they go into the upper punctum and the lower punctum. Puncta are nothing but little openings which uh, provide a drainage to the tears into the lacrimal sac. Now the upper punctum, as you can understand, it drains into the upper canaliculus and so does the lower punctum which drains into the lower canaliculus. Now an important point that you have to remember here is the length of the canaliculi. Okay, we will see why you have to remember this. For now just try to memorize that the upper canaliculus and the lower canaliculus both measure 10 mm each. Okay, now these two canaliculi open into this structure called the common canaliculus, right? Common canaliculus will open into your lacrimal sac. Another number over here. Lacrimal sac is 2 millimeters longer. It's about 12 millimeters. And then it opens into your nasolacrimal duct. That is about 15 millimeters. Okay. So the uh, upper, upper and lower canaliculi are 10 mm. The sac is about... 12 mm and the nasolacrimal duct is 15 mm. These three numbers you'll have to remember. Let's look at this person. Why is she crying? No, no, the person is not crying. It is due to an excessive production of tears or an excessive drainage of uh, an impaired drainage causing excessive outflow of the tears, right? This condition is called epiphora. Okay. So, excessive watering of the eye and the causes can be either an excessive production or an impaired drainage into the nasolacrimal duct that it, because they are not draining through this uh, pathway, they are coming out like this. Okay. Now, let's look at where does the blockage occur. See, the blockage is more common as compared to excess secretion. So, we will have to concentrate more on the uh, types of blockage, their location and their management. Okay, now let's look at the common sites of blockage. The most common site of the blockage of lacrimal apparatus is nasolacrimal duct. And the question, it's a very commonly asked question. Most common site of blockage of uh, the lacrimal apparatus is your nasolacrimal duct followed by the common canaliculus that's here. Then the upper and the Lower canaliculi, right? Okay, is it clear? Nasolacrimal duct here is the most common site. Then the common canaliculus or the upper and lower canaliculi. How will you determine where is the site of the block? Now a patient comes to you complaining of watering just as in the picture you saw just now previously. So how will you make out where the block is? And there are two tests which are devised for this. They are the probing and syringing test. Okay, let's see what each of these mean. Coming to probing, you can encounter two types of stops when you push a lacrimal probe into the punctum. Okay, lacrimal probe looks something like this. This instrument over here. This is your lacrimal probe and you will insert it 
through the punctum into the canaliculi to find out where the block is. You can encounter either a soft stop or a hard stop, two kinds of stops. Now what does these two mean? Soft and stop are the consistencies that you will feel when you insert this uh, lacrimal probe into the tear drainage system. Depending on how you feel, you will call it soft stop or the hard stop. And what does this stop mean? When there is a soft stop, you will have to interpret as there is a non-canalization of the valve. Congenitally, there is a valve present which has to canalize by the time of birth. If this valve does not canalize, it will give you a soft stop when you are probing. Okay, So, you can understand that if the inferior canaliculus is blocked, you will encounter the soft stop there and same applies to the superior canaliculus and a, so a common canaliculus block also gives you a soft stop. Now, how will you differentiate whether it is the common canaliculus or the superior or inferior canaliculi? Here you will have to recollect the numbers that you memorized. That is the canaliculi are 10 millimeters long, right? And uh, the common canaliculus will be greater than it is after the canaliculi, right? So, if you encounter a soft stop less than 10 millimeters, it's obvious that the block is in the upper or the lower canaliculi. But if you can cross these 10 millimeters and then you start experiencing the soft stop, that means the blockage is in the common canaliculus, okay? Is it clear? Because the canaliculi are 10 millimeters, see in both of these conditions, the soft stop will be somewhere less than 10 millimeters within the canaliculi. If you cross these 10 millimeters, it's clear that both of these canaliculi are not blocked and the site of blockage is in the common canaliculus. Okay. Now, let's look at hard stop. So, the probe, see you're probing it and straight away you're going and hitting the bone over here like this more clear in this picture. So, it means when uh, the lacrimal canaliculi are probed, there is no obstruction in the canaliculi and the passage is patent enough. So, the canaliculus goes, uh, the lacrimal probe goes and touches the nasal bone. So, the obstruction here is due to the blockage of the nasolacrimal duct itself. So, somewhere here is the obstruction. So, when you are passing the probe through this, it will be free to pass and it will hit the nasal bone and your obstruction is in the nasolacrimal duct. That gives you the hard stop. Now, let us understand syringing. Now, look at these picture. This is how you will pass distilled water into the canaliculi, right? And then you will look at the regurgitation of the water. If the water gushes out through the same punctum, say in the case, in this case, you are uh, injecting the water into the lower punctum and if the water comes out through the lower canaliculus itself, it in indicates a block in the lower canaliculus. Similarly, upper canaliculus, right? The water gushes out through the same canaliculus, the block is in that same very canaliculus. However, if the water comes out through the opposite punctum, Okay, you are injecting the water in the lower punctum, it's going like this and it is coming out through the upper punctum. That means the block is in the common canaliculus. You can understand, right? The common canaliculus is blocking, so the water comes out like this through the opposite punctum. And when there is a nasolacrimal duct obstruction that is over here, the water will pass through one of the punctum and come out through the other punctum. However, there are two varying features as compared to the common canalicular block. First one will be latency. It will The water will not come out as quickly as it is coming out in the case number 3 in common canalicular block and it will also be mixed with some mucus flakes. It will not be clear water because this mucus is naturally present in the nasolacrimal duct. So, it will get mixed up and gush out through the opposite punctum. So, the two features in syringing that you will notice in NLD block are the latency and the mucus flakes. Okay, this is about syringing. Now, let us look at a quick view about the treatment. It depends on the time of 
the presentation of the patient. Now we'll see only the management of congenital NLD obstruction. When the parent bring, brings the child to you is going to decide what your management will be. So mostly 6% of babies have this condition of uh, uh, obstruction of their lacrimal pathways. So if the baby presents to you within one year, you will advise the mother to do something called the Krigler's massage. What is it? You will ask the mother to apply pressure over here in this area with the finger and pull it downwards as the arrow is showing. Do that massage 15 to 20 times every time for thrice to four times a day. This will be your management if the baby is within one year. After one year, this procedure is done. That is the child's eye will be probed with the lacrimal probe so that if there is any blockage, it will clear out. However, as the child grows and his bony structure matures, after three years, you can go for the procedure called dacryocystorhinostomy. Ostomy, you are creating a new opening. That is a new tear, tear drainage opening. That is advised if the child presents to you after 3 years of age. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sai Suguna, your mentor for ophthalmology at MedicoApp. Now, thanks for watching the video. Now we have put such videos all together in our ophthalmology app. The trial version you can download from the link over here or in the description box below.